Okay, the next step then. We do not attribute responsibility for our feelings to the other person. We never say that you make me feel or I feel because you. Instead, we are conscious that the root of feelings are needs. See, behind every feeling, there is a need. Now, certain feelings tell us that there is an obstruction in our thinking, that instead of our being directly connected to our needs, we have chosen to go off to jackal land. So what are these feelings that tell us that we're not directly connected to our needs? Anger, depression, guilt, and shame. Those feelings are very valuable. They tell us that at this moment I'm not directly connected to my needs. Instead, we are up in our head telling ourselves moralistic judgments about somebody. Anger, we're making moralistic judgments about somebody else. Depression, guilt, and shame, we're playing that game on ourselves. But we're not alive, and as I would define being alive, which is connected to our needs. Yeah. Do you make a distinction between needs and preferences or desires? Yes, we make a, different, a big difference, as we'll see when we get to the next step now, because needs contain no reference to specific ways of getting the needs met. Those are preferences, or strategies, or requests. So we make a big difference between needs and between preferences, requests, strategies. So let's get into that. Let's right now connect our feelings with a need. Let's not go up to our head and think about the other person. Let's go into our heart and connect our feeling with our need because needs give us the most power with people. See, giraffe is based on a power model, power with people. It increases our power with them in the sense that it increases people's willing giving to us, to enjoy giving to us. That's power with people. We have been trained in a power over model, the use of punishment and reward. That's power over people to get them to do things not because it's coming from their heart and they want to contribute to our well-being or to life. No, they want to avoid punishment or get a reward. So we want to increase power with people. And the most powerful form of communication to do that is to bring people's attention to our needs that are not getting met. When people's full attention is on our needs, they hear no criticism no demands, it is natural to enjoy giving. But if we hear any criticism or demand, we lose connection with that natural desire to give, and now we want to defend and attack. So let's learn a, a language of needs. Under C, it says, imagine again that you are talking to the person, and express your reasons for feeling as you do this way, when you do what I describe, I feel as I've expressed because I am needing or because I need. So now see if you can identify what need of yours is not getting met. Leave the word you out of here because that will mix up need and preference. Leave the other person out of here. Just express the need without reference to the other person. All needs are universal. Every human being in the world has the same needs. So you can look at what you said and see whether this applies. You see. So if what you wrote down is a true need. Every other human being in the world has that need. We're all created out of the same energy. So we really see this at the level of needs. All human beings have the same needs. What differs immensely is the strategies that we have been educated in for meeting the needs. Different cultures educate people to meet the needs in a different way, but the needs are the same. Who wants to check theirs out? Okay. To know that you are responsible and honest. That uh, 
notice brought the other person in there. I have a need to know that you are responsible and honest. How do we express the need without bringing the other person in there? Now, we can bring it in one way. I have a need for your happiness, for your protection. We can say that. Okay. See, but not uh, the way you're saying it. Yes? I need to be seen and heard as who I truly am. I have a need to be seen and heard as who I truly am. Okay? Now, I'm, I have an impulse to qualify that and to say free. To be? Free. I have a need to be? The last word in that sentence is, who I truly am, free. I have a need, who I truly am, to be free. Yes, that's a need we all have. The important thing will come out when we get to a request, because that's a request that only you can meet. Other people can't do that. They can't meet that need. So if you don't know how to meet it for yourself, for freedom, you won't have that need met. Um, I'm feeling a bit frustrated because I'm noticing that everything is a strategy. In other words, mine is a need for an aesthetic environment. But right. underneath that, there is a need for serenity. And my serenity doesn't come from the environment. So this entire request, starting at A, is a strategy to get something called serenity. Okay, that's a need then. I have a need for certain peace, uh, but isn't there a need in there for certain aesthetics that will... Control? Right, but it, it, it crumbles the house of cards for me of wanting the sink not filled with dirty dishes. Help me understand that. Why wouldn't the... Uh, if you have a need for serenity... But then... serenity doesn't come from a clean sink. Okay, then we haven't got the, the right need then. Or the right... Then it's not that you want the, strand, the, the sink cleaned out. But I'm projecting that need onto the sink, thus onto a behavior of someone else. Well, it, the other person's behavior can be getting in the way of our need getting met. If the, the dishes aren't done, and it could be some needs of yours are not being met by that. Then you have to identify what the needs are that are not getting met. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm really not sure that I'm not basing my, an assumption that by having that sink clean that I'm going to have serenity, and I think it's a false distinction. Well, the nice thing about being clear about our request is we can test it out. If I say, I, for my need for serenity, I'd really be grateful if you would uh, clean up the sink. The person does it, and I'm still not serene. Okay, that helps. I know that doesn't work. <laughs> See, we never really know what we want until after we get it. If after we get it, it makes life more w miserable, then we know that isn't what we wanted. If it makes life more wonderful, then we know that is what, you know, a strategy that will meet our need. That's what makes life fun. We never know what we want until after we get it. That's why Paul Tillis, the theologian, says that Christianity requires the willingness to sin courageously. <laughs> You, you ask for what you want, hoping to meet your needs. Uh, you get it, it makes life worse. Okay, now I've learned that isn't what I want. Wouldn't it be boring to know what is real? Um, yes? When, okay, when you do what I described, I feel as I expressed because I need respect and acknowledgement and I need to be able to feel safe in my job environment. I hear needs in there, yes. When you do what I described, I feel as I express because I need to express my desire and need without it hurting you. No, no, no. Now no? we got a bunch of stuff. Oh, shoot. <laughs> if you want to avoid hurting other people, the only way I can offer you to do that is to become a nice dead person. <laughs> yeah. Because if other people have jackal ears, they can get hurt if you have heartburn. So would I just cut off that second half? Just, I need to express my desire and need? Yes, and then, I, and then what you want to say to yourself, and I want to learn to enjoy your pain. Ooh. Which Whoa. is, we're going to show you after lunch how to enjoy the other person's pain. Ooh, that sounds... It's one of the most loving things you can do, you see. If you, 
as I will define it. Obviously, I don't mean in a sadistic way. I, yes. So I, I have a couple I'm working on. One of them is because I have a need for predictability. In I my, have a need in my for predictability. Schedule. Okay. And the other one would be because I have a need for privacy. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, I, my need is for uh, comradeship and acknowledgement of my comradeship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have a need to memorialize the life of your father and in doing so, honor the life of your entire family. <coughs> I have a need to honor this life, yes. Um, I have a need to have communication with other people that is open and supportive of life. Need for mm -hmm. supporting of life, openness, okay. Mm -hmm. when, when you do this, I feel hurt because I have a need to be heard and understood. Yes, very important need, that need for understanding, to be heard, to be listened to, empathy, there's different ways of expressing it, but it's a critical need, one that we have daily, daily, yes. Bottom line, I have a need to love you and to let your love in. I have a need to love but don't bring the other person in there. To let. I have a need for lo to, to, love to love. And to let love in. And to let love. Yes. See, our needs don't. When we believe that our needs involve another person doing something, we take a very abundant world and make it scarce very quickly. So we don't want to mix up our need and a request. We may have a request, a strong request, that a particular person meet our need for love. See, that's a strategy. We may want this particular person, but we don't have a need for that person to love us. That's, that's mixing up the need and the request. We have a need for love. We have a strong preference that this person take the actions to meet that need. But we don't want to mix up the need and the strategy. Okay.